tell the truth. What is the truth? Depends on who you ask. You only see what you are. I know a man who mostly starts his sentences with, listen, this is the truth. Or, do you want to hear the truth? Don't let anyone else tell you differently. So usually after my conversation with the man, I wonder. I wonder about the truth. Or maybe just his truth. A truth is hidden in reality. In the realities of our life. So today we can say Jesus is the truth. He says it himself in John 14, 6. I'm the way, the truth, and the, and the life. But Thomas Merton says, God is far too real to be met anywhere other than in reality. Because truth is reality. And the more clearly we see the reality of our life, the better equipped we are to deal with this life. The less clearly we see the reality of life, the more our minds are confused by by falsehood, misperceptions, and illusions. And the less able we will be, we will be able to see or determine correct actions and make wise decisions. So if reality is, is your truth, what do you do with this truth? How do you get in touch with this truth? Let's read our scripture together in Ephesians 4. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your, your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. So stop telling lies. Let us tell our neighbors the truth, for we are all parts of the same body. So the message says, They've refused for so long to deal with God that they've lost touch not only with God, but with reality itself. Richard Raw says, God comes to us disguised as our life. So the truth is, is with us. But sometimes we live a liar's life. And most of, the, most of the time, we don't, we don't know we are lying. We don't know our lie. And when we deny reality, we hide the truth with, without being aware of it. You tell yourself the story about your life, but it's not so. Truth is obvious, but also not obvious. Husband and wife... In marriage, uh, spoke to me one day, very happy, married for three decades. And they tell you the story about this happy, happy marriage and the children and grandchildren. and Everything goes, goes well. But, but the truth is there are hidden things that have become normal. And they will talk to each other, but just... Maybe in a, in, a, in a whisper way, they will, they will speak to each other like, Frick, now is, now is not the time. Now is the time to keep quiet. And he will respond to, to say, Mari, Mari, this is not the time. Don't, don't talk to me like this. Or don't talk, me, talk to me like that. So there's hidden, hidden truth or hidden lies in, in that marriage. We don't acknowledge it. We don't say it. Another woman I, I hear from who says, I'm actually a person who forgives easily. 
I'm angry now, but two minutes later, I, I forgave and there's peace between us again. I don't hold grudges. And that may be true. But what happened here inside you? Got something hurt? Feeling inferior maybe? Feeling too close to, to hurt? Feeling, feelings that go against my values maybe? What is the truth inside of you? Because your eyes say something else. And when I'm not working with it, I live, I live with that lie. I become that lie. Truth is stuff that really goes on, that really matter. And denial of, of this truth makes me a prisoner, makes me sick. It can kill me. Reality always wins. It can save your life. You can deny there's someone in your house. It's, I didn't hear glass breaking. I didn't uh, hear the, the drawers go open in my kitchen in the middle of the night. I can, I can say it's not true and lose my life. This means that when we try to meet God in places of pretense, we should not be surprised that God is not going to cooperate. Where God will be is in the midst of reality, the realities of our lives. So what does one do? We are invited to admit this truth. We sometimes avoid the reality of our life, deny it is there, and with it, we deny the truth. The path of our lives will inevitably take us through experiences, experiences we would never choose. These, these things are true. Uh, experiences of depression, maybe, failure, illness, suffering. Betrayal. Maybe there's, there's some of your, there's uh, abuse or, or neglect in your life. Anger, maybe that's, that's hidden deep inside. Doubt, confusion, and ultimate, ultimately, death. If we try to avoid experiencing these dark places, we will lose touch with important dimensions of our humanity. When I deny the truth of what I feel, I lose touch with myself, with what is really happening in my life. But when we dare to face those demons in the dark places of our inner selves, we discover that life can be lived with more intensity. Most addiction programs or psychologists will say recognition is the first step to healing. At the AA group, um, the first thing we heard is to show up, to be there, to be present. And if you're there, say it. Say it. Admit it. I, Jan Pochenpool, maybe, have an alcohol problem. This is, my, this is my truth. This is the struggle I have. You can't address it if you don't admit that it's there. It makes you sick if you do not admit the truth. And you live with the sickness. It's the first step towards healing and living closer to the truth. Admit it. I am doing it. I know I'm saying it. I know it's a problem. I know it's holding me back. I know it hurts my relationships. And maybe you say, I can't help myself. You might be a regular criminal in your own life. 
admit it. Thomas Merton says, the first step towards finding God, who is truth, is to discover the truth about myself. And if I have been in error, the first step to truth is the discovery of my error. And if you know it's there, the second invitation is to accept the truth, to live with this truth. To live with the truth means we, we open ourselves to all the realities of life. We connect with this truth. We take the power away from, from the lie by saying, it is what it is. I accept it's there and now I'm going to start laying it down. I'm standing up. Paul says, we must put this old man down. Otherwise, we will perish because of these deluded desires. Jesus says in John 8, 32, and you will know the truth. You will become one with the truth. And the truth will set you free. So why is it so important? I can only be freed from, from, freed from something if I know there's something I need to be freed from. I need to lay down the lie. It's a, it's a decision. I make a decision not to look for excuses for these things that are hidden. Not to blame others for it. Because that's easy. Not to rationalize. I choose the truth. I take responsibility for this reality. I accept it's there. It's mine. And I need to work with it. And then I'm invited to respond to the truth. The biggest way we can respond is to share it to speak the truth, share it, share it with God. Uh, someone once said, prayer helps us to confront these realities of truth. Prayer should be the practice that anchors Christians most firmly in reality. Prayer should be the place where we can where we can honestly share our true selves with the true God. And this is what gives prayer its transformational potential. Unfortunately, however, the, the self that Christians often bring to prayer is our lying false self. The self we would like to, to be or at least want to be, to be seen by others. Often prayer is simply another way we defend against the truths, truths of our experiences. In contrast, prayer grounded in reality allows us to meet God in those realities. Prayer be then becomes a tool to live with authentic, of authentic, authenticity and, and to be truly alive. Because just as God is far too real to be found anywhere other than reality, so humans are far too real to thrive anywhere other than in reality. It's C.S. Lewis that says, the prayer preceding all prayers is may it be the real I who speaks, may it be the real thou that I speak to to lay down this false self, the self that is separated from the truth. Share it with God and share it with others. Paul says, Paul says, so stop telling lies. Stop with it. Let us tell our neighbors the truth for we are, we are all parts of the same body. 
There's wonderful healing in talking about your pain. About this deeply hidden reality. James says, confess your crimes or your sins to each other. And pray for each other. So that you can be healed. At Mosaic, there's, um, there's platforms created especially for you in, in your needs. Maybe conversations with a... A uh, spiritual guide, psychologist, maybe at the wholeness center. Maybe it's just a conversation in a group, small group, maybe one on one, just sharing this truth. We would like to invite you to, to be part and, and come share your life with us. Where are you today? What is that? that the truth invites you to? Do you have someone you can share this truth with? Where is the place where you should share this, this truth? Maybe a previous relationship that you need to go back to and share this truth to, to get healing from. Maybe you have no other choice To share the truth will make you free. You can be free from, from lies in your life. Things that hold you down and limit you. This is the truth today. You can be free by acknowledging, accepting, and sharing this truth. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for the truth, the truth that comes in Jesus. Help us through your spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, to acknowledge this, this lies or false self in our lives. To accept that it's there. Accept that It's ours, and we need to work on it. Help us to, to respond to this lie or truth in our lives. Help us to, to respond to, to your invitation to help us through this, through this phase of, of our lives. To help us through this deep inner struggle with life. Help us to see what you see when you look at us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Receive the blessing. May the love of our Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen.